Good morning, and thank you for being with us for worship this morning. We will have a short coffee hour at 11 o'clock. You just go to trinityzoom.org, and I hope that you'll be able to join us for a few minutes. Trinity is open to in-person worship now with both 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock services of morning prayer. And we'll continue our virtual worship in addition to the in-person worship into the near future so that those who don't feel comfortable returning to in-person worship yet, um, or those who are shut in, or those who don't live in this geographical area can still worship with us. On June 27th, we will be having Holy Eucharist at the church and online. The service at the church will be led by Father Jim Jones, who I know many of you are familiar with, and I'll be leading the service online. And if you plan to worship online and would like the consecrated bread and wine brought to you, please let uh, Arlene at the office know today. Uh, so just leave her a message. So that way uh, we'll be able to uh, bring you the consecrated sacrament. We are redoing some of the plantings around the church and our building manager, Jeff Fellows, uh, and the Buildings and Grounds Committee could sure use some assistance. So if any of you'd like to get your hands dirty, uh, or if you like to mow, or if you like to trim and have a few minutes to help, please call Jeff at the church office. My friends, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Dearly beloved, we've come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Would you please join me as we say together Psalm 100, the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before God's presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some went down to the sea in ships and plied their trade in deep waters. 
they beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wit's end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then they were glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt in him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, and I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb, when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Surely it is God who saves me, trusting him I shall not fear. For the Lord defends and shields me, and he saves Our second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, 
knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God. With the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet all are well known. As dying and see, we are alive. As punished and yet not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our third reading today is from the Gospel of Mark. When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, we all have times when we feel fear. And many would say that dealing with fear is a matter of experience. It's like when our child is afraid of monsters uh, in the closet or under the bed you know, we can assure them that that's just their imagination. Our experience allows us to reassure them, you see. But there's a story uh, that I'm always reminded about, about this young boy who was having a rough night. There was a very bad thunderstorm, and the child asked his father to come in and sit with him. And the father came and sat with the child for a long time. Finally, the father said, okay, uh, you're going to have to go to sleep now. I need to go and get in my own bed with mommy. As the man was walking out the child out of the child's room, he heard the child under utter under his breath, "You big chicken." 
<laughs> I always think of that story when I think of being afraid in the night. No matter how many times we have encountered things that frightened us, no matter how many experiences we have, there are times that fear just is overwhelming. And the story from the Gospel of Mark today tells of Jesus' disciples, many of whom were fishermen, who were raised on the sea, and no doubt had encountered numerous storms on the Sea of Galilee over the years. But this particular storm was different. And beyond what they had uh, been in before, beyond their power and experience to deal with it, you see, this was a cosmic storm. A cosmic storm is a bit different. Let me explain. The first month I was in Nebraska, I experienced my first tornado. The sirens went off, the skies turned black. I even had to turn my car's headlights on to get home from the office. And as I was sheltered in the basement with my family, we were listening to the updates and news on the radio about the storm. And we heard a report from a man who had called into the radio station saying that he could actually see the funnel cloud from his living room window. Now, obviously, this guy was used to tornadoes. He'd been born and raised in Nebraska, and uh, he liked to watch them, and he liked to report about them. And then in mid-sentence, the man said, it's time to go. <laughs> And you didn't hear anything more because he was heading down into his uh, basement to his bathroom down there. The next morning, I uh, discovered that this man was a member of my congregation. I didn't know it. So I went out to visit him. And what I saw was absolutely incredible. The man lived in a split level house and the whole house above the ground level was gone. There was nothing there. All that was still standing was one rock chimney and a mantle. And what was really startling and what made us both wonder was that the little small mementos on the mantle were totally untouched. There was nothing else there but that chimney and mantle, but those mementos were still untouched. It just made us both look at each other and just wonder and say, this is absolutely something that is just beyond our understanding. And, you know, when we think that we know, when we think that we've conquered our fears, when we think we've experienced so much, we don't have to think about storms overwhelming us. I'm always reminded of God's words to Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loin like a man, Job. I will question you and you will declare to me, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? And so forth and so on. It's a powerful, powerful reading. When we think that we're all that, read the book of Job and we start finding out that, well, maybe we think a bit too much of ourselves sometimes. <laughs> I had several lobstermen in my congregation in Maine, and the one thing that they told me over and over and over again was how much they respect and how much respect that they had for the power of the sea. They knew it. And how much they considered lobstering and fishing as an activity of faith as well as knowledge. Even the most experienced fishermen encountered storms that freaked them out. And this is a cosmic storm on the Sea of Galilee that Mark's talking about. And Jesus is asleep in the boat. He's not all concerned about their dilemma. What do they do? They wake Jesus and say, teacher, don't you care that we're perishing? Grab a bucket and bail. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's not what they said to him. <laughs> I always think that's what they should have said to him. Grab a bucket. But Jesus woke up. He rebukes the wind and he says to the sea, peace, be still. And then the wind ceases and there's a dead calm. And he says to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? The question to me here is how can faith calm our fears in the midst of circumstances that are absolutely beyond our control? Now, remember that this is part of Mark's gospel that we've been reading about recognizing the kingdom of God. Remember last week, 
uh, there was this metaphor about um, the mustard seed and the great tree that grows up out of that and recognizing the kingdom in our journey in life faith. So how do you envision the kingdom of God in the midst of a hellish storm? Calm, right? The eye of the storm, peace. Jesus, the son of the living God, brings peace of the kingdom of God, you see, into the present storm that threatens to swamp their fragile boat. It's faith in the kingdom of a living God that gives hope, that shows light at the, in the darkness of the world. It's the shalom of God, the peace of God, even in the midst of the unpredictable world around us, that is our gyroscope and keeps us upright and afloat. You see, this isn't just a story about Jesus having power over nature. It's a story about Jesus having power over cosmic forces at work. Notice that the words that Jesus uses to calm the storm are exorcism words. Jesus rebukes the wind and he says to the sea, peace be still in an emphatic tone. David Jacobson reminds us, as strange as it sounds, he says, Jesus is not offering therapy for our fears, but an exorcism for the world out of whack. There's no doubt to me that our world, my friends, is out of whack. Oh, just look at the news, the reality that we've had 270 mass shootings in the past 167 days in the United States. Racial injustice still pervades our society. 156 years after the first Juneteenth day that marked the end of slavery in the United States. It's hard to fathom that even after all this time, we still try to deny and hide realities like the 100th anniversary of the Tulsa race massacre which is just one instance of the hard histories that we have to be willing to admit, to teach, and to deal with if we ever want to come to grips with our own American heritage and then move forward against racism. And of course, let's not forget the pandemic. That most certainly has put our world out of whack in a cosmic way. And in the midst of all these waves of chaos, it certainly is comforting to me to hear a story of hope like we read today, that the kingdom of God is still present among us. I am so grateful that I can be in the boat with Jesus, who has the power to rebuke the wind and calm the waves. Today's story from Mark reminds us, in case we forgot, that even in the darkness, the light is dawning. Trust in God, walk in faith, faith, not just by your own sight, by your own experience. My goal in the journey in this wacky world is to develop a faith like St. Paul when he says in Romans 8, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen, Paul. Amen. Please join in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me for the prayers of the people. Loving Father, light of our minds and souls, we thank you for sending Jesus to live among us to make the way of the cross the way of life. And we praise you for sending the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, comfort us, and guide us to all truth. Holy Trinity, one God, let our praises come to you for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. We pray for your one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, that you would guard its unity and preserve it in peace, especially in areas where your church suffers violence because they bear the name of Christ. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Didi, our bishop, for Glenn, our priest, and for all lay ministers of Trinity Parish, that you would inspire and lead us all. For your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. For our people in our world and of our nation, that you would instill in all people the desire for peace and mutual respect, that you would enlighten us to appreciate and care for this earth, our island home for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. We pray for those who struggle in poverty, for those who endure chronic pain, and for those who suffer from addictions in its many forms. We pray for those who live in fear of abuse. We pray for those who are ill, especially the Seeger family, Martha, Kathy, Dana, for Kristen, John and Marcy, Rudy and Sharon, for Nancy, Larry, Andrew and Mary, for Virginia, Nancy, Jessica, Michelle, for Sean, Ruth, Judy, Michael, Judy, Ethan, for Colleen, Wasa, Michael and Chris. Are there others? We pray that they may know your healing power and peace for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. We thank you for the lives of those who are celebrating birthdays. For Steve, Joe May, Bruce, and Forrest. And for the relationships of those celebrating anniversaries, Robert and Deborah, and Christopher and Susan. Are there others? for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. For the communion of saints who have gone before us, especially Helen and Clarice, who recently died, and from the memorial flower list, Tate Robertson, Dr. John Robertson, and Jean Tate Robertson, and Marjorie Tate. Are there others? Let us hear their voice of encouragement as we run the race of faith that is set before us for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills. Until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming 
and the welcome of your embrace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, make us have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name. For you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, you are our heavenly parent. You remind us in scripture that you are always there to love us, welcome, and forgive us. We thank you for all fathers who are faithfully giving of themselves for the love of their children, even when they face challenges that demand efforts which test the limits of their human capabilities. We want to thank you for our own fathers and grandfathers. And here, would you please state the name of your father or grandfather? Joseph. We pray that you would bless them and encourage us to let them know just how much we love them and appreciate all that they have done on our behalf. In the name of Christ, our Lord. Amen. Open our eyes and ears, O oh Father, that we may always become more aware of your spirit moving in the world. Heal us of the blindness of racism and the iniquities which exist in our society. Motivate us to act in faithfulness as citizens under the reign of God, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. All this we ask in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ, and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, we pray today for those in our world who have been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. We pray for the sick as well as those who treat patients with COVID. We pray that you give wisdom to those who are in charge of distributing vaccines, that it may be done with equity. We pray also for all who struggle mentally or financially during this pandemic. Show us all how we may be agents of your compassion and love and inspire us to act with integrity and courage following the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. 
So clothe us with your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Please join me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And please join with me as we say the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.